where today our group will be presenting the case studies of department projects in Gold Coast. And this is the presentation outline. Firstly, we will introduce the purpose of the presentation, and then the project details, key sections, and at the end we will do the conclusion. And the purpose of the presentation is to demonstrate the typical construction approaches for two high-rise residential projects. Um, here's the project details. So the first project is 16 8 to 18 Shelby's um, Avenue Brobish. It has 28 story, 80.8 meters with 113 res residents and two to three bedrooms apartments constructed by Morris Property Group. The value of the unit in these apartments starts from about $600,000. The estimated start date of this building is from March 2019 and the finish date would be in 2020. The second project is in um, 36th Grand Tiana Avenue, Brockbridge. It has 25 story, 77 meters, with 88 residents. It has three bedroom apartments um, and constructed by Hutchinson Builders. The value of the whole project is about um, $78 million. And the estimated start date is from June 2019, and the finish date would be in December. Um, of 2020. The key structural components of, for these two projects will include concrete, concrete walls, steel framing wall, and reinforced concrete slab, pre-cast concrete, uh, etc. The key sections for um, this presentation will be include um, the retaining system for basement ex excavations, sea compellings, and sheet pellets. And then we will be introduced the um, dewatering system for basement excavation, deep well point dewatering. And then there will be the um, um, dilapidation, pre and post construction, building construction, condition surveys and reports, construction plan and equipment, construction method adopted for the high rise buildings, foundation and basement system, wall system and flooring systems. And in the retaining system for basement excavations, in this project, it includes the sea compelling and sheet pelling. Um, in the project um, 16 to 18 Avenue, Brockbridge, um, so this project is using the sea compelling. The application for that is um, to is the ground retention before the excavation commences. The procedures for this um, pallet is there are two alternating piles, namely primary and secondary piles, or female and male piles. The male piles are partially cut into either side of the female piles to make a continuous in previous structure. The advantages for it is it has a no loss level, maximize the land use, it avoids the risk for construction, including commencement to surrounding structures. And for another project, it uses the sheet pallet. And the application for it is for the underground parking foundations and basement to construct the bulkheads. They are designed to interlock with each other to form a wall for temporary or permanent support along the anchors to offer more lateral support. There are also some permanent steel piles to support a long-term service life. The sequence for the sheet pattern is to check the arrange, check and arrange the sheets in section to ensure the piles can interlock each other. And secondly, hammer, hammer down the first sheet to the designed depth in the subject project development. And then make sure the repertory hammers or impact hammers or even hydraulic equipment to install the sheet. And, and then we will be driving the second sheet and interlock with the uh, first sheet is installed. Repeat the same process until all sheets are installed. Use the connector elements to keep the integrity of the wall. The advantages for sheet pallet is uh, uh, it has a um, lightweight and it is very easy to install. And secondly, it will be um, recyclable and sustainable. And 
Compelling length is flexible and easily adaptable. Joints can withstand very high pressure and durable. And last but not least, the last, it has the main, the little maintenance required under the water or above the water. Um, for both the project, um, they are all using the deep well point dewatering method. The application for this method um, is suitable to high-rise projects which are expected to be under construction for up to 30, uh, 12 months or more. This method is also often installed in a grid between the boundaries of the sites and to act a combination to gain a dry working environment platform. The sequences of the, this method is to uh, firstly to drill wells around the excavated area and the diameter of the wells varies between 150 mil to 200 mil. Making deep wells around the vicinities, groundwater is designed to fall into them under the impact of gravity. And in the end, the level of the groundwater in the surrounding area will decline. And lastly, to install the casings of diameter filling can retain the wells. Also, well filters and screens which are in between the sidewalls and case are used to serve as a filter to prevent the unwanted sediments running into the well. Um, we can see on the side that there is a um, HP60 hopper bottom skid mounted slit separator for dewatering to remove the slit and other contaminants from subsoil and water pumped out by using dewatering deep well ponds. This equipment is suitable for dewatering um, on site with restricting spaces or limited access. Uh, after research, I found out the specification for this equipment. The normal design flow rate is 40 meters square per hour, uh, cubic meter per hour, and the maximum hydraulic flow rate is 60 meter cubic meter per hour. The hydraulic separation area is 40 meters square. The sludge thickening area is 3.3 meters square, and the stump hopper capacity is 2.2 uh, meters to the power of 4. And the advantages for this method would be the minimum more noise. The procedures are quiet and, quiet and efficient, and it is very suitable for working in an urban residential area. Uh, also, um, it has the little maintenance required. The pump sets are designed to be reliable and robust, and it is all easy to install as well. No vacuum, vacuum um, inducement required. And then Perm will introduce the next session. I will introduce the uh, dilapidation uh, <coughs> and the post construction building conditions service in the report. <coughs> um, due to the uh, particularity of the construction site, heavy equipment, uh, machinery, and the workers will cause the damage to the surrounding property during the construction steps. The pre and the post construction building conditions service in the report become critical. Um, because it uh, requires in advance and uh, agrees on the surrounding building and the uh, infrastructures uh, around the construction site that may be affected during the construction processes. The report will mainly record the existing uh, damage to property and the related infrastructure, as well as the possible impact uh, on the construction, excavation uh, or uh, demolition. Uh, reports topically record in the take a snapshot uh, before the project starts. And then summarize the post construction status of the um, assets after the um, project ends. <coughs> uh, there are some key contents of the service. Um, there are um, dates of uh, dilapidation, inspection, and dis uh, description of area, key inspection items, location, plan view, photo of inspection, and the signature of engineering contracting service. 
the building sir, uh, the building surveyors is responsible for uh, assessing the compliance of uh, building and uh, insurance uh, dilapidation condition survey report. The next part, I will introduce the uh, construction plan and equipment. There are four uh, <coughs> equipment used for the site. There are four more uh, scaffolds, concrete pumps, and uh, grid. Uh, <coughs> the first one is uh, formwork. Uh, formwork is a temporary uh, structure mold and uh, supposed cast in suit concrete uh, members until they gain stress and uh, become self supporting such as wall, slab, floor, column, and so on. Uh, the picture shows the formwork for column and the floor slab. Uh, once the concrete has uh, reached the surface stress, the formwork can be removed. Uh, usually, formwork has the following characteristics. Firstly, it's very strong but uh, lightweight. Secondly, mm, it's easier to install and easier to disassemble. Finally, it's uh, very uh, economic and uh, easy to uh, maintain and repair. Uh, <clears throat> the next part, the, the next one is scaffold. Scaffold is a temperature uh, structure that serves as a platform to support staff and uh, materials during the uh, construction, uh, maintenance, and the uh, uh, repair of buildings. Sometimes, uh, scaffold should have some uh, structure components such as. Face jack or plate, standard laser uh, transom and uh, bracing. There are two common um, types of uh, <coughs> scaffold uh, will be applied in the uh, structure. Uh, the first one is a uh, tube system, and the, the second one is a uh, prefabricated model system. Uh, the, uh, the third one is concrete pump. Uh, in today's uh, construction uh, industry, Advanced uh, concrete pumping machines are equally efficient and uh, economic for these buildings, uh, whether they are large commercial, building, commercial buildings or uh, small residential buildings. Concrete, uh, concrete pumping uh, machines simplify the construction processes and uh, increase efficiency and uh, accuracy, helping to uh, reduce overall construction costs. Concrete, uh, concrete pumping machine can accurately Pure concrete to any location where it is needed. There are two types of wood pumps and uh, land pumps. Um, both types uh, have their own applications, and uh, um, different construction projects should choose different types. Uh, <coughs> the boom pump was uh, applied to the uh, to the site. It's suitable for apartment project and they used for ready mix institute concrete. Not only can be placed placed at all levels, but also uh, doesn't require um, third part professionals to operate. Um, there are some advantages of choosing the red bone pump, uh, <coughs> such as it can increase the concrete uh, current speed. It can reduce the number of labor. Finally, not only can it help improve concrete stress, but also ensure higher accuracy and uh, quality in uh, concrete pouring. The last uh, equipment is crane. Uh, <coughs> uh, tower crane are a model uh, form of financing crane. It's often uh, uh, composed of the same base components in the it's fixed to the uh, concrete slab on the ground and uh, sometimes attached to the slab of the building. Uh, tower cranes are suitable for high-rise buildings because of uh, their high, uh, high heat and the uh, good lifting capacity. Uh, reasonable placement of the um, tower crane on site uh, has an important impact on the overall construction schedule because if the crane can cover the entire construction site, not only can the construction materials be uh, transported quickly and efficiently, uh, but also the time and the labor costs can be reduced, which have a uh, direct impact, impact in the uh, progress of the project. Um, there are many types of tower cranes, although the types are different, but the basic components are the same, including a uh, mass uh, slowing unit, operating carbon, uh, working arm, counter jab, uh, hold a winch, hope, and uh, wings. Uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> there are three types of, uh, of power currents used uh, for today's uh, construction industry. Uh, <clears throat> the, the first one is um, the self-erecting power current. Uh, it's easy to use in the install and suitable for short-term projects that require frequent and uh, infrequent operation. Therefore, um, suitable for private housing and the small to medium-sized residential projects. The second one is loving uh, loving tower grids. It's ideal for uh, restricted construction sites, such as uh, prompt or narrow uh, spaces on the construction site, as it provides complete uh, uh, coverage and uh, prevent uh, obstruction and uh, is designed to easy to assemble. The last one is the top sluing current. Um, current. <coughs> it's suitable for urban area and uh, uh, e uh, emission free uh, electric operation and also reduce uh, the eruption and uh, stress in a residential environment that may uh, surround your building areas. Uh, the loving power plan um, was applied for the uh, for the site. Um, according to the project scale, the frequency of use of the crane, the space constraints of the construction site, and the project budget, the loving power crane is selected for the project. It's the the perfect. It's a perfect one. <laughs> uh, the next part, I will introduce the key health in the safety. Uh, precautions. Mm, healthy and uh, safety precautions are very important consideration in the construction set. Usually the project site must not only provide protection systems, but also ensure that the construction site can comply with health and the safety obligations in the operational of uh, plant and equipment. Um, there are two parts. The first one is protection systems. It involves uh, personal protective equipment, um, <coughs> such as um, uh, such as the uh, hard hats, steel KP boots, uh, safety glasses, and uh, the <coughs> the second one is uh, the second one is work in the public protections, um, such as the uh, age protection and the uh, penetration cover. Um, the health and the uh, safety obligation in the operation of plant and the equipment will uh, have the following content. Um, they are guaranteed safe work. Um, every stage of the project must comply with Australia Work Healthy and the Safety Act 2011. Make sure you use the right equipment for every operation. Uh, <coughs> provide protect, uh, protective equipment to ensure uh, adequate separation and uh, uh, provide uh, adequate training and guidance, complete maintenance of the equipment and plant, and uh, ensure that the equipment and the plant are in good condition uh, before use. And uh, <coughs> provide complete feedback in the maintain uh, certain record in the take off full accident investigation and ensure up-to-date certifi uh, certifi certification and the insurance. Um, the next part, Tom will introduce the construct method adopted for the high rise buildings. Today, my topic is about construction methods adopted for the high-rise buildings. And we can have a look at these two pictures. These two pictures are the site visit we take. And it shows that uh, the foundation system for the, these two sites are floating system. And the con construction process of this floating system can be divided in four main steps. Uh, the first step is uh, the site can be excavated for the floating foundation. And 
the watering system needs to be built for getting all of the unwanted water. And the third step is the slab needs to be reinforced. Uh, the last step is uh, the floating foundation needs to be casted. And why we choose these floating foundations is because it's got four advantages. The first one is this foundation tap can be more efficient than the parallel foundation. And it's also reducing the risk of the settlement. And the dewatering system and the water tight materials makes the underground structure more durable. And furthermore, the building would stay above high water levels because the building can be elevated to required height. My next part is talking about the inter talking about the wall systems and let's talk about the internal wall systems first. Uh, for the two sites we visited, uh, they've adopted the separating walls which are designed for the construction of internal long load bearing walls within concrete frame structures. And for these internal wall systems, the construction process can be followed. As the first step is the prep preparation before the construction. And then we can prepare the panel installation. After that, the first panel can be installed and subsequent panels can be installed as well. And the last step for this is the wall finishing. For the reasons that we choose this type of internal, system, internal wall system is because it's got three benefits. The first one is the steel reinforced panel is strong and durable for internal walls. And it also has lightweight panels frame, which can construct fa fast and use less labor on site. And it also has a great soundproofing and acoustic insulation properties. And as for the external wall systems for the two sites we visited, uh, it adopted high-rise external wall system which is designed for the construction of non-load bearing walls which are using steel reinforcing frames. And for the construction process of the external wall system, it can be divided the steps following. The first step is preparation before the construction. And then we can prepare the panel installation. And Furthermore, the installation of the first panel can be started and then the subsequent panels can be installed and the last step is the panel finishing. And for the reasons that we choose uh, this type of external wall systems is because uh, firstly, it has a high load capacity and the durability and lightweight and it also has a noise reduction and sound insulation. As for the thermal insulation and the moisture re resistance, it all have good performance. And my last part is about the flooring system. And for the flooring system of the site we visited, uh, we adopted the normal slab for the basement and we adopted the flat plate for the upper floor and we chose the flat slab for the ground floor. Uh, for the normal slab, the construction process can, can be seen in the following. The first step is the formwork could be assembled and erected for the slab and reinforcement can be prepared and placed for the slab. After that, the concrete could be poured, compacted and finished for floor slab. And the last step is curing concrete and the foam wall can be removed. And why we choose this normal slab is because compared to the flat plate and the flat slabs, the normal slab are usually thicker 
so it can bear more loads. Therefore, uh, it is appropriate to use for the basement because the basement is usually used for the car park. And the reasons that we select flat slab for the ground floor is because at first it's flexible for room layout and it's also easy to do the reinforcement placement. We can use the big table framework can to to we can use the big table framework for framework installation and construction time would be less due to the big team table for framework. And at last, uh, the reasons to select the flat plate for the upper floor is because uh, this system does not need any beam, so we can have the space for more services areas. And this system also requires just simple homework. Uh, and the floor to floor height can be increased due to the structural depth of a flat plate is minimum. Uh, in conclusion, this report used two apartment projects on the Gold Coast as examples to understand the structural principles and the practices in the design and construction of medium and high rise buildings. The report not only includes general details of the project such as location, purpose, basic structural components, etc. But also introduce and analyze the core section of the project, such as the retaining system for basement excavations, including second paling and shade paling, the watering system for basement excavations, the PDA's construction condition report, construction plant and equipment, and construction methods adopted for the high-rise building, including foundation system, wall system, and flooring system. Uh, that's all the presentation. Thank you.